In this video, we're going to tackle something that's more simple than what we generally do on this particular channel. It's going to be a simple wave-like motion with a bunch of strings and a few particles looping. So let's see how we can create this. We're going to do the entire thing in geometry nodes. So we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and switch it from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Now we can press this new button to add in a new geometry node tree, after which we can zoom in select our group input and press X to delete it. Now we can press Shift A and search for a mesh line on which we're gonna instance the rest of the lines. So we'll plug this into the group output for now and we want it to be on the Y axis. So we'll change this from offset to endpoints and we'll change the start location to something like minus five units on the Y and the end location will make the Z value zero and the Y value as positive five. So now we have a line going from minus five to plus five. However, we want more points to be present within this point. So we'll increase the count to something like 30 for now. Next up, we have to instance some more points on these points. So we'll press shift A and search for instance on points node. And for the instance, we'll use another mesh line. So press shift A and search for a mesh line and plug that in. Now all of them are pointed straight up towards the sky. We want them to be on the floor. So we'll just rotate it on the Y axis by 90 degrees. And now they're all on the floor. Next, we also want these to have a fixed number of points. So we'll change it from offset to endpoints and we'll change the end location to a value of 10 and we'll increase the count to maybe 500 so that we can get a smooth motion when we actually add in the noise displacement. So if we want to displace this right now, we can't do it because they're just instances and each object will be displaced by a specific amount. To displace the individual points, we have to realize instances. So we search for a realize instances node, plug that in right here, and now press shift A and search for a set position node. Now for the offset of the position, we can use some noise texture. So press shift A and search for a noise texture and plug the color into the offset. Now everything moves up by 0.5 units on each of the axes because that's what happens when you average out random data. But since I'm not going to place the camera down here and I can place the camera arbitrarily later on, I don't need to bring this back to zero. Then we'll change from 3D to 4D and we'll reduce the scale so that we get nice smooth waves. Right now it's much too chaotic and we'll just reduce it maybe a value of 0.3 will give it these nice smooth wave-like displacements. However, I feel like it's too subtle and we need to increase the height of the waves. So we can press Shift A and search for a vector math node. Remember, we have to use vector math and not normal math because color data has three values and we can't mess around with them individually. So switch it from add to multiply and change this value to maybe two to increase the height by twice the amount. Now this also lifts it up even higher, but again, we'll be placing our camera arbitrarily later on, so we don't have to bother about that. Next, before we deal with the actual animation of this, we can start off by setting our animation and render defaults. So we'll go to our render properties, switch on bloom and screen space reflections, go to our output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second and the end frame to 150 so that it's a five second long animation with the output stored wherever you want it to be. And I'm going to change the file format to FFmpeg video with an encoding container set to MPEG4 and an output quality of perceptually lossless. Next, to start the actual animation, we can increase our timeline a little bit, go back to frame zero and play around with the noise texture. It's the basic rule that we use for looping noise textures that has been done in multiple videos on my channel. So do check other videos out because you'll always gain information like this. First up, we'll duplicate the noise texture, then we'll press shift A and search for a mix node and we'll change it from float to color and we'll plug this color into slot A and this color into slot B. And then the output of this mix is what's going to go into the vector of the multiply node. Now on frame zero, we'll hover over the first W value and press I and we'll hover over this factor, change it all the way to zero and then tap I. And then for this noise texture, we'll change the W to something like one and press I. Then we'll go to frame 150, change this value to the negative of whatever value you kept over here. So we used one, so we're gonna make it minus one, hover over it and tap I, change this W value to zero and press I, and then change this factor all the way to one and press I. Now select all of the nodes, so shift select, to make sure all of them are selected, then come down here and press T linear to make sure that it's a seamless loop. Now, if you actually play the animation, you should be able to see the waves moving around and creating this particular animation. If at all you feel like it's not moving enough, you can always change the max value of the W. So in this case, instead of having a W value of minus one, I'm gonna keep the W value at minus three and press I and then go all the way to frame zero and change this W value 
two, three, and press I. So now if you play the animation, you should see some more motion happening. Now the frame rate drops quite a bit. So make sure you change the playback from play every frame to frame dropping so that you can see the actual speed at which the final animation is going to be rendered and play around with it to make sure that it's not too intense or too fast for your final render. So I'm changing the values to minus 1.5 and 1.5. Now that you're done with this part of the animation, you can set up the rest of the geometry node tree. So first thing is, if you actually switch off overlays, we no longer can see these because they're not real geometry. To convert them to real geometry, the first thing that we have to do is press Shift A and search for a mesh to curve node and then search for a curve to mesh node. And for the profile curve, we can press Shift A and search for a curve circle. Now we can reduce the radius down to something like 0 0.01 and just plug this curve value into the profile curve. You can switch off overlays by toggling this button and you can see what it looks like. I think I'm going to go even smaller, so I'm going to change the radius to 0 0.005. Next up, we can set the material for this. So press Shift A and search for a set material node and plug that in over here and just choose the default material for now. We'll make changes to that later on. Next, we want some particles to be present all over this place that also moves around randomly. So for that, we'll create a new tree that will add into this. So first up, we'll press Shift A and search for a Join Geometry node so that we can have both the trees together and just plug that in over there and then press Shift A and search for a cube. Now we can plug this into the Join Geometry. If you have node render switch on, you can press Alt, right click and just select the two nodes and it will automatically get connected. And we need this cube to be the size of this particular grid, which was a 10 by 10 grid on the X and Y axis. So we can make this 10 and 10 on both the X and the Y. Now it's not placed in the right position. So we can go ahead and press Shift A and search for a set position node, plug that in and just play around with the offset till you get it centralized. So on the X axis, a value of six centralizes it. And on the Y axis, adding another value of one brings it close enough. Now it's also too low. So we're just going to lift it on the Z axis by about 1.5 units. And that should bring it above the curves. Now we need to place points within this cube that we just created. And to do that, we need to convert it into a volume. So search for a mesh to volume node, plug that in, and then press Shift A and search for a distribute points in volume node and put that in over here. Now, just to make these calculations a bit faster, I'm just going to reduce the voxel amount to something like 16 so that it's easier on my laptop. Next, we can go ahead and instance some icospheres onto these points. So press Shift A and search for an instance on points node. And for the instance, search for an icosphere and plug that in as the instance. Now the icospheres are going to be too large. So we're going to have to reduce the radius to 0 0.1 or even lower. We'll play around with that later on and just increase the subdivisions to something like five so that they're nice and smooth. Or you can reduce the subdivisions to four and search for a set shade smooth node and plug that in right after the icosphere so that each of the icospheres remain smooth. In fact, we can change the subdivisions to three as well. Now we can play around with the scale of these icospheres randomly to just add in some variation. So we press shift and search for a random value node and we're going to use float itself so that we get the same value on all of these and they remain circular. Plug that in right there and we're going to increase the mint to 0 0.2 and maybe we can reduce the max to 0 0.8 so that the largest circles are just a little bit smaller. I'm going to go down to 0 0.7. Next, we want these spheres to actually move around randomly so we can search for another set position node. So shift a set position. And because we haven't realized the instances, the spheres as a whole will move when we use the set position, which is exactly what we want. And now we can take the output from the multiply node, which was the looping motion and plug that in to the offset of the set position from the points. Now our points are going to also move around randomly along with our base mesh. However, they also move up because of the randomness. So we can always go back to our first set position node after the cube and just bring that down on the Z by a little bit. So in this case, I had to reduce it back to one. And now I think the spheres are placed where I want them. I'll also have to just decrease the Y to zero and the X offset to five. Now they're perfectly above the grid and I can actually place my camera. So I'm just going to bring the view to something that I like. I'm thinking of going with something like this. And once I'm happy, press control alt zero to snap the camera to view. Then I'll select the camera, go down to the camera properties, increase viewport display and change the passport out all the way to one so that we don't see anything outside the camera view. Now we can just grab it and move it on each of the axes separately till we just find the perfect position for it. And for now, I'll stick with this. I might change it a bit later. Next up, we can start with the material for our spheres. We have to add that into the geometry node tree. So after the set position, press shift A and search for a set 
material node. Plug that in. Go to the material properties over here. Press this plus button to add in a new material slot. Add a new to add a new material and change this to spheres and select that from this set material and then select the original material and change that to strands. Now we can switch over from the geometry node editor to the shader editor and switch from the solid viewport shading to the rendered viewport shading to actually see what the materials look like. First off for the strands I'm going to increase the metallicness all the way to one and I'll keep the roughness at 0 0.5 itself. Then for the spheres I'll increase the metallicness all the way to one as well and reduce the roughness down to 0 0.3. Next, I'm going to go to the world properties over here and just reduce this color down to black. And then I'll select the light, press Alt G to clear its location, then press GZ to grab it up and then press GX to bring it closer to this particular waves that we have. And then go to the actual light properties and change the color to maybe something pinkish for this particular render. And the last thing that you have to do is again, select the cube and for the spheres material, and you could do it for the strands material as well. Go down to the settings and switch off shadow mode. So change it from opaque to none. And that way you don't get shadows of these spheres landing on these strands, which don't really look good in my opinion. Similarly for the strands, you could change the shadow mode to none and that might help remove a few self shadows that might appear. Other than that, I think that's all there is for this particular animation. And all you have to do is press render animation. Hopefully these simpler tutorials are also helping out a different set of people that might need to know just a few techniques here and there to apply in their own animations in their own creative ways. Of course, I will have more complicated tutorials on my channel to get even more satisfying results based on your needs. But until they come out, do check out all of the previous videos that are present on my channel because a new video comes out every single day. And until the next video comes out, keep creating and stay creative.